Hello citizens of our nation, Raul War here, and I really didn't want to have to make this video, but things have just gotten so out of hand and I cannot stay quiet about this ongoing issue anymore. As you all know, I pretty much eat, breathe, and live Star Wars, but the past several months have been such a strange time to be a fan. As a Star Wars fan for over 40 years now, we've gone through some really great times and we've gone through some pretty rough times. No matter what, I've always spoken highly of the fandom and I've, I'm, I've genuinely been proud to be a Star Wars fan until now. Now, full disclosure, while I have separated myself from the fandom a bit, my love and passion for the original trilogy has not changed and it never will. Since Disney took over the franchise, I've gotten three wonderful films that I've accepted as part of this franchise that I've grown up with. I love The Force Awakens, I love Rogue One, and I love The Last Jedi. Yes, I said it. I love The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi is a very interesting film. It came out in December and the film has been critically acclaimed. The critics really loved this movie. However, the fan response has been less than stellar. There are fans out there who hated The Last Jedi, and there are fans, like myself, who loved it. Since its release, both of these opposing sides have been trying to paint a narrative. The crowd who hated The Last Jedi has been going around saying that the film has been universally hated by fans everywhere, while the crowd who loved it has been saying that the film has been universally loved by fans everywhere, and that the people who didn't like it are only a small, insignificant portion. Now... That brings us to the ultimate question, which side is right? Well, I was trying to find an answer, and I did a little bit of research. Now, there are four major movie review sites that we need to look at. Most people only know about Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb, but Metacritic and CinemaScore are lesser known, even though they are just as important. If you go on Rotten Tomatoes right now and look at The Last Jedi's fan score, you can see that it currently holds a 47%, which is bad. But like I said before, while it's reasonable to assume that most people only looked at the Rotten Tomatoes score, the other sites are just as significant. If you go on IMDb, you'll see that The Last Jedi currently holds a 7.4 out of 10, which is a very good score. That means that about 74% of the fans on IMDb gave The Last Jedi a positive review. On the opposite side, if you head over to Metacritic, you'll see that The Last Jedi currently holds a fan score of 4.6 out of 10, which is very bad. Finally, we head over to CinemaScore. CinemaScore is probably the least known site of these four, but in my opinion, it is the most significant when it comes to audience ratings. That's because CinemaScore is 100% troll-proof. On Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, and Metacritic, anyone with access to the internet can hop on without even having seen the film and vote freely. People can also vote as many times as they like. People who didn't like the film can downvote it as often as they want, and people who liked it can upvote it as often as they want. CinemaScore verifies that people have seen the film, and it cannot be manipulated in any way. The way CinemaScore works is that they'll set up a booth at movie theaters, and then they'll poll audiences after they walk out of a film. Unfortunately, for logistical reasons, CinemaScore is only present at a small percentage of movie theaters in the country, but that doesn't diminish the legitimacy of its ratings. That being said, if you go on CinemaScore, you'll see that The Last Jedi currently holds an A audience rating, which is obviously extremely good. Now, was The Last Jedi universally loved or universally hated by fans? Well, of the four major film fan rating sites, it did poorly on two of them, and it did really well on two of them. So, the answer is neither. It's literally split down the middle. This film is as divisive as divisive can be. So please, don't listen to anyone who says that the film has been universally loved by fans or universally hated by fans. There are a lot of people on the internet, like Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers, for example, who have been saying that everyone hates this movie, but that's not the case. There have been fans on forums and Facebook groups who have been saying that everyone loves it, but that is not the case. The numbers the numbers don't lie. The numbers are there. Just take a look at them, because the numbers do not lie. And this isn't a slam on, like, Geeks and Gamers... Like, I actually really like the Geeks and Gamers YouTube channel. I have a very weird relationship with them because I find that about 
most of the time. I disagree completely with whatever he is saying, but I still like him because he's very brutal. He's very honest. He doesn't care about what anyone says or thinks about him. And above all, he is respectful if your opinion differs than his. So yeah, definitely go check out Geeks and Gamers. I really like that channel a lot. With all of that out of the way, I want to talk a little bit about why I have been distancing myself from this fandom. And pretty much the only reason as to why I've been doing so is because this fandom has become way too toxic for its own good. Like, this is... I'm sorry, but the past four months, almost, since The Last Jedi came out, this shit has been ridiculous. Like, I can't even... I don't know. Why can't... Why can't we all just be at peace with each other? Like, instead of being at peace with each other, instead of being able to accept that people can have a different opinion than you and there's nothing wrong with that, Star Wars fans are currently engaged in a bit of a civil war. And that is the best way to describe it. This is a civil war. I love The Last Jedi. There's tons of people out there who hated it. And people have a problem with me liking it. This shit... Okay, this is... This has gotten up to the point where I'm literally afraid of hopping on like any Star Wars Facebook group or forum or YouTube video... And saying something and joining in on the conversation. Because I know that as soon as the moment I hop in there and I say something that someone doesn't agree with. Someone is going to start some shit. And this is... (sighs) This is ridiculous. I like hearing different points of view. I love The Last Jedi. But I do like hearing from people who didn't like The Last Jedi. I want to hear their thoughts and opinions, and yeah, I mean, I like hearing opposing views, just as long as people are respectful about it, of course. So, I'm on YouTube, and I came across this video that this one guy made, this one guy who hated The Last Jedi, he absolutely despised it, and I watched this video, and you know what, I gotta give my props to this guy, it was a very well done video, he... It was clearly very well thought out, and he made a lot of good points. And above all, he was respectful about it. He did not put anyone down who liked The Last Jedi. And you know what? I commend this guy for that video. As a matter of fact, I hopped into the comments section of this video, and I said, As a massive Star Wars fan since childhood, even though I pretty much disagree with you across the board, thank you for this. You're clearly very intelligent, and again, even though I disagree, your points are very well thought out. And most importantly, you're respectful about your opinion, and you didn't try to put anyone down for liking the film. This is one of the few videos about The Last Jedi criticisms where I didn't feel like I was losing brain cells while watching. Okay, you see that? You see what I put? Very respectful, very well-mannered comment. And then, some other fucking dumbass decides to respond to me, and he's like, Oh, you need to have a brain to lose cells in the first place, and if you think that SJW shit that ruined Star Wars and Luke Skywalker forever was good, then you clearly don't. Do you want a fucking cookie? Like, seriously, I have several cookies up in my kitchen, do you want one of them? Like, what did this, how did this benefit any of us? Like... Oh my, I was respectful as hell, and I'm being attacked right now for no fucking reason? Give me a fucking break, like seriously. And this this is the type of shit I've been dealing with ever since The Last Jedi came out, and I'm just, I don't need this kind of negativity in my life. This guy, the only thing remotely negative that I said in my comment was, This was the only video about The Last Jedi Criticisms where I didn't feel like I was losing brain cells while watching it. And notice how when I said that, I was not... I didn't mention the guy who posted the video. I did not mention this asshole who went ahead and commented. 
I was not talking to them directly when I said that part. But yet, this one guy over here, he took offense to it. And I mean, I wasn't talking about him specifically. But hey, I mean, I guess if the shoe fits, then... <laughs> this shit has been ridiculous. And it all goes down back to this one thing. Like, I want to grab all of these people, whether you like The Last Jedi or whether you didn't like The Last Jedi. I want to get a time machine. I want to take them back to whenever they were in, like, kindergarten, first grade, or second grade, or whatever. I want to take them back to the day when their teacher taught them a lesson about the difference between facts and an opinion because clearly people don't understand this <sighs> this is just i can't i can't i really can't and for the record it isn't just the people who dislike the last jedi who have been acting like this like i have seen people who love the last jedi like i do attacking people for not liking it this has been happening on both sides, and this is unhealthy. This is unhealthy for the fandom. This is unhealthy for the brand. This is unhealthy to everyone involved with Star Wars, whether you're working on Star Wars or whether you are a fan. And the shit that some people have been saying is just ridiculous. Like, I have been accused... Of not being a true Star Wars fan for liking this movie. Okay. Okay. I'm not a true fan. Let's see, because true fans, they didn't go watch The Force Awakens uh, four times in theaters. They didn't go watch Rogue One three times in theaters. They didn't go watch The Last Jedi six times in theaters. Let's see, what else, what else? Um, um, let's see, true fans of Star Wars, they don't go at midnight to their local Target to buy the new toys at their midnight launch. And as a matter of fact, when I was there at Target, I won a giant four-foot Porg that is sitting in my basement right now on a couch. And after I went to that Target... I drove 15 minutes to Toys R Us, and I bought more Star Wars toys. Let's see, let's see, what else, what else? Pretty much, almost every time I go to like a Walmart or a Target or something, I go to look at Star Wars toys. No matter what it is I came to the store for, I go and look at Star Wars toys for at least a few minutes. I don't always buy something, but I do that. Let's see, let's see. Mm. Last year, I spent a little less than $1,000 to uh, attend Star Wars Celebration in Orlando, Florida. Yeah, because Star Wars Celebration, true fans don't go to Star Wars Celebration, okay? And while I was there at Star Wars Celebration, I waited in line... 16 hours to go and watch The Last Jedi panel. I could have gotten up really early the morning of the panel, and I would have gotten there, and I would have been able to watch the panel in one of the streaming rooms that they had. Or better yet, I could have lied down in bed at my hotel, and I could have watched the panel on my laptop. But no, no, you see... I wanted to see Mark Hamill and Daisy Ridley and John Boyega and Ryan Johnson with my own two eyes. True fans don't want to see them with their own true eyes. So I sat there in that line for 16 hours. And let's see, uh, I met Ryan Johnson. He came out like at 2 o'clock in the morning just to say hi to fans. He signed my badge. Let's see, what else, what else? Oh, yeah. 
I've uh, I've also spent hundreds of dollars, not just at Star Wars Celebration, but at several other conventions, to get photos taken with some of my favorite Star Wars actors, including Felicity Jones, Mark Hamill, and Carrie Fisher. True fans don't want to get pictures taken with them, so I am not a true fan, not even in the slightest bit. For Christ's sake, I have this freaking... I recently bought this freaking ATM6 walker at a closing sale at a Toys R Us. <laughs> I don't know what else. I don't know what constitutes me as being a real fan, but real fans don't buy Star Wars toys. Expensive Star Wars toys at that. And let's see. What else? I can go on and on and on about this. I really can. Oh, oh look at this shit. Let me show you guys something. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see this shit, but this is a Ray cutout. My friend, who is the manager at a store, they were getting rid of some of these cutouts, and he saved this one for me because he knows that I'm a big Star Wars fan, and that Ray is one of my favorite characters, okay? So yes, yes, I don't know. I don't know about these people. I mean, these people are ridiculous. And, um, oh, and by the way, uh, do you guys want to take a tour of my bedroom? I'm totally not a real Star Wars fan at all. For the record, I don't mean to sound pretentious or anything like that. I don't mean to come off as a dick to anyone. I'm just... I'm a really big fan, obviously. And I know that there are a lot of people out there who are probably bigger fans than I am. But this is just... People will call you out for the dumbest things when they really don't know anything about you. And... Conversely, on the other side, I have also been accused of um, being just a stupid, blind lover of everything Star Wars, no matter how bad things are. Really. Really. So, uh, which one of the two am I? And if I really am a blind lover of everything Star Wars, no matter how bad they are, uh, let's see. 
why did I post three videos on here back in the fall in which I reviewed the prequels and I gave them all negative reviews? Listen, anyone who has ever spoken to me about Star Wars, whether it be in person or over the internet, knows that I can't stand the prequels. I hate them, hate them, hate them so much. Like, I understand there are people out there who like them, and you know what? That's cool that you like them. That's really, really cool. I will never bash you for liking the prequels. I wish that I could like them, but I just didn't. Let's see, uh... That are really popular uh, Star Wars, uh, Clone Wars animated TV series that a lot of people seem to like. I can't get through season one of that shit. That shit is just so terribly bad to be like. And I know people have been telling me to give it another try, but I mean, maybe I will at some point. Maybe I'll just skip season one and see how good it really is, but... Every time I've tried to watch that series, I cannot get through season one because it is terrible. And, uh, yeah, and as much as I love, as much as I've loved what they've been doing with the Star Wars films, I I have problems with Lucasfilm. I have problems with Kathleen Kennedy and some of the things that she's been doing over there. Listen, I love... Kathleen Kennedy, I think she is a powerhouse producer. I mean, just look at this woman's resume. Like, outside of Star Wars, this woman is amazing. But, I'm not afraid to acknowledge that there are problems with how she's been running things over there. Whether it be from uh, her inability to work with the directors that she hires. Because, listen, there has been, there is no denying, there has been a drama with every single film that Lucasfilm has done ever since Disney took over, whether it be, you know, the biggest one, obviously, that whole director drama on the Han Solo movie. I mean, they had problems with Gareth Edwards on Rogue One. They've had problems with um, Josh Trank on that uh, Boba Fett movie that they have since canceled. They've even had problems with J.J. Abrams himself on The Force Awakens. I mean, ironically enough... The only film that they haven't had any problems with at all is The Last Jedi. But, I mean, yeah, something is clearly wrong with Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm because they can't seem to get on the same page as the directors even though they hired them. And, uh, let's see, what else? Um, the canon itself, I fear, is starting to become a mess. Like, when? Okay, listen. When Disney announced that they were completely getting rid of the old canon, I was one of the few guys who was like, this is the right move, this is what they needed to do, while a lot of other fans were understandably pissed about this. I felt that they needed to do that because that old canon really, even though I liked a lot of the material there, it really was a mess in terms of like the timelines and continuity and stuff like that. And I mean, just recently, we have seen the beginning of them starting to have those same issues again with the new canon. I mean, whether it be Vice Admiral Haldo being completely different people in the Leia Princess of Alderaan novel and in the film, The Last Jedi. Whether it be uh, Poe and Rey meeting each other for the first time at the end of The Last Jedi, despite the fact that Even though the Force Awakens novel is canon, they met in that novel. And I and I know Pablo Hidalgo, he came out there and said that the novels are canon, except for when the films contradict them. To me, that is laziness. That is laziness. So yeah, I am not afraid to point out problems that I've been having with Star Wars and Lucasfilm. I'm not I am not a blind lover of everything that they do. The shit that people say is ridiculous, man. I can't stand this shit. This has all just been very upsetting to me. I mean, Star Wars, obviously, it has been... The franchise has been an instrumental part of my life. And to see it... To see this much hostility surrounding it, it's just... It's painful. And I mean... 
Like I said before, this I will always love this franchise as a whole until the day I die. And the fandom... I love the fandom. I really have. Like, throughout all my years of being a Star Wars fan, I have loved the fandom up until these past few months. I mean, Star Wars, it's just... Star Wars was... It's the first movie I ever remember watching as a kid. You know, when I was, like, on VHS. Remember those? When I was, like, two or three years old. The first movie that I ever saw in theaters. (laughs) Fun fact. First movie I ever saw in theaters was uh, Babe, Pig in the City. But the second film that I ever saw in theaters was Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. I remember this. My mom took me to go see it along with my aunt and my uncle on opening night when I was like four, maybe five years old. And listen, I'm a very, I consider myself to be a very creative person. I, I love movies, obviously. I went to film school. I have my BFA in filmmaking. And Star Wars... Star Wars was the first thing that really inspired my creativity and my love of film. So, on a personal level, this franchise really means a lot to me. And the fandom has meant a lot to me too. Because, I mean, the films aside, this fandom has been amazing to me over the years. The past few months have not been amazing at all, but, and I just, I have so many stories of, like, there are people in my life who I have bonded over with, you know, about Star Wars. There are people that I have met through Star Wars, and there are just so many examples of that. Like, for one, like, several years ago, you know, back when I was in high school, A really good friend of mine, she started dating this guy, and, well, this guy and I, we were in the same grade, but, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know him at all, like, I never spoken to him at all, like, really, or anything like that, but, I mean, she starts going out with him, and, you know, at some point, we started, you know, the three of us started hanging out, and sometimes with some of our other friends, too, and... The one thing, I mean, we had a lot of things in common, but probably the biggest thing that he and I had in common was that we both loved Star Wars. We bonded over Star Wars. We would have several Star Wars conversations. And this is someone who I had never spoken to before in my life. And, you know, a couple years go by, and at The Force Awakens, I believe it was The Force Awakens... Force Awakens, opening night, the, you know, the Thursday night, it was crazy, and I run into him there, (laughs) I mean, which was, it was a lot of fun, and you know, we sat down, we saw the movie together, we both got there early as fuck, and, you know, we caught up, you know, while we were sitting there waiting for the movie to start, talking about, you know, our speculations, our expectations, and how excited we were. And then the movie starts, and, you know, and we enjoyed it. And, you know, I haven't I haven't seen him in, like, I want to say, like, two, two and a half years. But to this day, like, every once in a while, we'll hit each other up, like, on social media or Facebook, Snapchat, whatever. Or we'll, like, play video games with each other on Xbox, and we'll still talk about random Star Wars stuff. And another example, I have here this Walmart exclusive Leia pop figure. And I really wanted this pop figure. None of the Walmarts by me had her. And uh, and that, that really, I was really sad about that. And I go on Facebook one day and I'm looking at posts on um, this Star Wars Facebook group. That I was a part of. And this was before The Last Jedi came out, by the way. This one girl, she made this post. And she said something like, Hey, like, I have several of these 
I have like several of these Leia Pop figures, the Walmart exclusive ones. If anyone wants one, just let me know. And so, yeah, I reached out to her because I wanted one. And I asked her, like, okay, like, how much do I owe you for this? And she was like, no, no, you don't owe me anything. I'm like, really? And I insisted on it, like, no, no, come on, come on. I gotta give you something. Come on. Nope. She was like, nope, nope, nope. I'm not letting you give me anything. And so she sent me in the mail this Leia exclusive, I mean Leia exclusive, Walmart exclusive Leia pop figure that I had been after. And when I got this in the mail and I opened it, I was like, this is really one of the reasons why this fandom is amazing. And I mean, a couple weeks went by and I eventually like, I did, like, I mean, she did something really nice for me, I so I wanted to do something really nice for her, so I sent her a gift card to, like, Amazon or something like that, and, you know, we've been, we friended each other on social media since that, and, you know, we've spoken to each other, like, on Facebook comments or messages and things like that, and she genuinely seems like a really awesome person, like, I'm fairly confident that I would be very good friends with her if we ever met in person. This is just two of the awesome experiences that I've had all thanks to the Star Wars fandom. Oh, and by the way, shout out to Brian and Starbright. I'm I'm assuming that's not your real name, but that is the only name I know you by. So yeah, shout out to you guys. Y'all are freaking awesome. Y'all are Two of the reasons why I still have faith in the Star Wars fandom, despite all the bullshit we've been going through, to be honest. Given how broken the Star Wars fandom, how broken and toxic it's been over the past few months, all of this has really been making me miss all of these moments where I've just been genuinely, genuinely happy to be a Star Wars fan and to just be a part of this fan community. I mean... I mentioned before I had the opportunity to go to Star Wars Celebration in Orlando, Florida last year, and I had a great time. When I was there, like, I got to do several cool things. Like I mentioned, I saw The Last Jedi panel, I, you know, I got to see Daisy Ridley and John Boyega and Mark Hamill and, you know, Ryan Johnson. I got to get my picture taken with Mark Hamill, and I bought a lot of cool toys and merchandise, but despite... All of that, by far the best thing about Celebration to me and the entire Celebration experience was the fans. I, you know, when you're at a convention like this, you're going to be standing in line for a very long time, like, all throughout the convention. And during that, you know, I got to meet and talk to some of the best people ever, and it was just so refreshing because when you know when you're at a comic con or something like that you know there is a lot of positive energy but you no know, a comic con you know that's very vague you know there's several different franchises like basically every franchise in the world is represented at a comic con or something like that star wars celebration you can just look around and you, you'll know that you have at least one thing in common with every single person there. And that is your love and your passion for Star Wars. And that honestly, I think that's a beautiful thing. That really is a beautiful thing. I got to meet several people, several awesome fans. And all throughout the weekend, like, I really enjoyed, like, talking to other fans and hearing several stories about what Star Wars has meant to them, how they discovered Star Wars, how Star Wars has impacted their lives. That, to me, was the best thing about Celebration, by far. Another one of my favorite moments as a Star Wars fan was the opening night, the opening Thursday of The Force Awakens. That was... That was really quite an experience. I mean, I got there, you know, at the time, like, 
most of the theaters by me didn't have reserved seating. Now most of them do, but at the time they didn't. So I got there several hours early, just so you know I could get a good seat. And by the time I got there, there were already a good amount of people there. And you know before before the previews even started, the that theater was packed, and there was just so so much positive energy in that theater. It was. You a star a non Star Wars fan could have walked into that theater, it could have seen and absorbed that energy, and they would have walked out like very energetic, very happy, and it was so much fun just sitting there, you know, and just basking in this moment. And there were I even remember like there were several kids in that theater, a lot of them. You know, they brought their own toy lightsabers and they were just swinging them around. And at one point, you know, this group of kids, they just ran up to the front of the theater and they started lightsaber dueling with each other, which was freaking hysterical, might I add. And and not only these kids were playing with each other, but every everybody in the audience was cheering them on. Everyone was yelling out things like, Go red! Go blue! Jedi rock! Oh, the Sith rock! And that kept on going until, like, theater management came in and told them to stop. But then, of course, you know, the best, the, okay, we're talking about energy here that night. The best thing was, obviously, when that opening crawl started and the audience erupted like crazy. It was Force Awakens opening night. I miss I miss moments like those. We haven't had a moment like that in Star Wars since. I mean, you can argue that Last Jedi was like that too, but it it went seriously went downhill the moment Last Jedi hit theaters. And now, given how bad the state of the Star Wars fandom is right now, how can we move on from this? I mean, I have a couple ideas. I mean, I'm still remaining very hopeful that the fandom will be able to move on from this state, but I mean, there are several things that need to be done. First of all, um, Kathleen Kennedy, Mark Hamill, and Orion Johnson. It's been months since The Last Jedi has come out now, and they're still, to this day, like, they're still talking about it and making statements about it. And, you know, Ryan Johnson, he's been given a lot of shit by the fandom. You know, by the people who didn't like The Last Jedi. And he has defended the movie. He has he has stayed true to his beliefs in making this movie. And I really commend him for that. He's really standing by the decisions that he has made. Even though he acknowledges that a lot of fans haven't been happy with it. And I think, like, I really do commend him for sticking to his guns. But... I wish that all of them, at this point, let's stop talking about The Last Jedi. Let's just, just just shut up about The Last Jedi now. Because it feels like every single time either Kathleen Kennedy or Ryan Johnson or Mark Hamill said stuff recently too, every single time that one of them says something in regards to The Last Jedi, you get this uproar from the fandom. You'll get the people who didn't like The Last Jedi, saying things like, see, see, they don't know what they're doing, they're stupid, they need to be hired, fired, or something like that. And, well, I don't, I don't think they mean to do this, but I think that they are, by continuing to talk about it, they are feeding all of this. They are, are allowing this to continue. Again, like, I don't think that they mean to do that, but at this point, I just wish that they would just stop talking about The Last Jedi. And, you know, let's start start talking about other things. I mean, we got Solo coming out in May. We got Episode Nine coming out in a year and a half. We got the TV series. I mean, whatever new TV series it is that Dave Filoni is working on. Let's start talking about that some more. I mean, we got Star Wars Celebration 2019. I mean, eagerly awaiting for an announcement, so... I can figure out if I can go or not, because I really want to go. So, fingers crossed. Guys, please announce that soon, because the suspense is killing me. And, and of course, we have the theme parks. 
Those are opening next year. Let's stop talking about The Last Jedi at all. And let's start talking about those all those other things. Those the bright future of this franchise. The Han Solo movie comes out next month, May 25th, and I think that this film is this film could potentially get everyone back on board depending on how good it is or, you know, it could at least be a step in the right direction to getting everyone back on board and getting this fandom back to how it used to be. I mean, Han Solo, I mean, when it was first announced that they were doing a Han Solo movie, I was like, eh, really? I mean, I thought, of all the characters, of all the worlds, the stories, and the eras that you can make a Star Wars film out of, you're gonna make a film about a character that everyone already knows and, quite frankly, no one needs any more backstory about. That's kind of been my feelings on this film ever since it was announced. And then, of course, last summer we had that entire director drama, you know, with Phil Lord and Chris Miller, where they were fired from the movie just two weeks before they finished filming. And when that happened, I was like, oh my god. God, this movie is going to be a freaking disaster. And, you know, my spirits have been lifted up quite a bit since that. I don't think the film is going to be a disaster. But, I mean, I'm not I'm not excited for it. I mean, I've seen, you know, the trailers for The Force Awakens and Rogue One and The Last Jedi. When I saw those each one of those trailers, I was like, Oh my God, yes, let's go! I watched the solo trailer and I was like, yeah, looks good. But I mean, I'm I'm despite my trepidations about this project, I am cheering for this Han Solo movie now more than ever. Like I want this Han Solo movie to be amazing. I'm very I'm cautiously I'm cautiously optimistic about it. But I mean, if this film is amazing and the fandom universally likes it, this can only do good things. It might not get everyone back on board, but like I said, it will be a step in the right direction. And that way, by the time episode 9 rolls around and that film is universally liked by the fandom, we will be back to how things were before. Before all this Last Jedi, Star Wars, Civil War nonsense started. Before I leave you guys, again, I just want to make this abundantly clear. It is okay to like The Last Jedi. It is okay to hate The Last Jedi. There is nothing, nothing wrong either way. But what is not okay is to disrespect people. It is not okay to put someone down for their opinion. It is not okay to insult someone for having a different opinion as yours. That is not okay at all. If you disrespect me, in my opinion, or anyone else, in their opinion, for that matter, I think you seriously need to fucking reconsider your entire life. You really should. Like, there is no reason for this to be going on in the fandom. But I do, I do remain hopeful. I really do. I mean, a lot of bad things have happened in this fandom over the past few months. There are a lot of stupid, dumbass people in this fandom. For example, the person who did this shit, I know, I was reading about that a couple months ago when I was on the train coming home, and that was truly an embarrassing day to be a Star Wars fan. But while there are a lot of people like that in the fandom, I really do believe there are so 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 many more like amazing awesome people and i really do love this fandom i i really do so 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 much so i remain very hopeful and optimistic that we will be able to move on from this star wars civil war that was apparently caused by the last jedi but yeah i mean These are just a couple of the things that have been going on in my head. Being a Star Wars fan for the past couple months. I know I think I've rambled on for 
a little bit longer than I was intending to, but I mean, hey, this shit, this, doing this, talking to you guys, it's kind of felt like therapy to me, so I feel a little bit better about myself now, I'm not gonna lie, but anyway, thank you guys so, so much for listening, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe today for more content, Raul signing out here. Farewell, citizens of our nation, and I will see you guys in the next video.